yeah, it, it, it will definitely be a bit cramped if you have as many people following you as I do. You know, it is. Oh, Will here. Ah, uh, today we are back in Skyrim, and we will be checking out three mods. Now, two of these mods are pretty new, and one of these mods is it's been out for a little wee while, but it was brought brought up by Dragon Blade Kalal, and I thought, you know what, we're going to have a look at it because it kind of can tie in with my character and how they were designed. Also, there will be a little bonus segment of basically what is basically a shameless plugging on my part. But we will get to that later on. So the first mod we're going to look at is the one that was brought up by Dragon Blade Kalau, which is called Way of the Monk. And it was created by Bob 15 Now the reason why I'm looking at this is because my character, Pre, here, is from a one of, is from actually one of my own mods, which is basically Tetra Awoken, which is obviously a race mod. And one way that they've been set up is obviously you know they don't you know they yeah obviously yeah they can use weapons and all that obviously and it's not like you can't use weapons, but they also specialise in hand to hand combat. So, for example, normally, normally with most races, obviously, when you go for a punch, you would just throw a punch. You know, you know, pretty bog standard, pretty normal. But with the Tetra, for example, you throw a punch, you get an ice spike. You throw a left punch, you get some electricity. You throw a bit of force, you get paralyzed. You throw a bit more force, and you get force push. And I'm not going to do the one-two combo because that creates firestorm, which goes off three individual times. So you know I'm not going to set that off here. That'd be stupid. But the way in a monk is designed for kind of like people who want to do more hand unarmed or like hand-to-hand -hand combat. So I thought actually it's a pretty suitable one for my character. So where do you actually go to get? This stuff on the way of the monk. Well, all we need to do is come to Helgen. Now, I do believe that they are here at any point. You know, so you could do it right at the beginning. You could do it right near the end. You, could, you come here at any time. It's, it's not here at a specific time. It's here straight from the start. And what you want to do is you want to go into obviously Helgen Keep, but you want to you want to go into the room where you go if you decide to follow the storm cloaks. All right. As always, you want you in here. You can, you can ignore that guy, he, uh, Bogart, he's been added in by another mod that I've got. So if you look on the table, it was here, Monk's Satchel. And inside here, now unfortunately there are no actual like images here, but I think this is just them um, guys. So I don't know if these are added on required to be armour or if it's a ring, I'm not sure, but we will find out. But you know, you got Chiefest Sparks, Chiefest Fire, Chiefest. So obviously, you know, damage does 90 at the moment on mine, so obviously on your playthrough it might be a little bit different. But, you know, Fist Sparks, target takes 6 points of shock damage and halves as much magical damage. You know, so it has just gives it a, a very slight little magical enchantment. Same with the fire, slight magical enchantment. Chiefest is just basically exactly the same, but no enchantment. And you got the Monk's Ring, doesn't give you any armor rating. But Monk's Unarm damage plus 30, Monk's Health plus 40, Stamina plus 60, and Health and Stamina rate. Now it doesn't say what it is. It says Monk's Health and Stamina rate. End. So I'm going to guess that obviously your Health and your Stamina rate will recharge faster or will be higher. But unfortunately, unfortunately here, I'm not totally sure which one that is, but you know, we're going to take one of them. And we'll take one of those of each, sort of thing like that. And then you just have the, what is classed as the monk's robes, but, you know, so you can either have hooded monk's robes or just normal monk robes. They're not, they're nothing unique. I think the only thing that's been changed about them is that now they are a light armour rather than a clothing piece. You know, but, well, no, we'll take, we'll take the hooded ones. And he's got some gloves. 
some just normal boots and obviously the ring which I will take again because I think I already took it once but right so let's have a look all right so obviously yeah in a ways of how they look yeah you know they're just gonna look like any other kind of normal monks robes nothing special about them nothing unique about them uh, so yeah unfortunately I can't run at the moment because I'm over encumbered but what can I do so you know so yeah the armor itself yeah nothing unique now if we look at on here so it does look like that the health and stamina may actually be increased so I think those things are increased because of the ring so we shall have a quick little look see if we can find it so we go amulet mara okay so monk's ring you know unarmed damage that's fine and no it doesn't it does nothing increased about them here hmm so I'm not totally sure what a ring actually does in ways of when it comes to saying about increased stamina not 100% sure because nothing seems to be coming up on here about it at all so it's like not 100% sure what's going on there so next we need to look at the weapons which I believe that the chiefest actually do come into under weapons here they are so chiefest fire chiefest fire la 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 alright so we'll just put on fire obviously you don't physically see anything you still you know you still got your fists out obviously I'm, I'm still using obviously I've got Tetris so obviously the ice spike and that is nothing to do with it but I will believe that obviously if you punch someone obviously they might suddenly set on fire you know but there are some other things that come with this so if you come over here to these, these little stone slabs here you will see these three scrolls monk's fist mind and body and tranquility Right, so the scrolls that we usually you find will be obviously be in the book section. So, Tranquility. At peace, a monk can pacify, regain health and stamina once a day. So, I'm going to guess that's obviously kind of power. So, but you know, for the, for the sake of it all, we're going to learn it. Oh, I am actually, oh, I'm actually looking at the scroll. Ooh, that's fancy. Ah, peace of mind. Now, so obviously, yeah, you know what it, you know, it helps you re health regen and stamina regen once once a day. The only problem is it doesn't specify how much, uh, but it is a power. So if we do that, and then we just go. All right, so that will pacify everybody. Got Michael Jackson over here. All right, so now we now we look at the active effects. So let's have a look. And okay, so it's not really that long, but again, unfortunately, it doesn't tell you how much. It doesn't tell you the amounts, but it does tell you how long it is. But it's a very short time, and obviously, since it's a it's a it's a power, it's once per day. So nothing spectacular but could be useful in certain areas. Monk's Fist. Monk's Fist does 17 points of damage. There you go. So it's autom automatically put on and then boom. I think that's it. It's permanent. And the last one is Mind and Body. A monk can focus the mind and body so that time seems to stop and moves power into the fists. And here you can see in the powers you've got Mind and Body. So you do that and obviously everything just goes very slow. Now I don't know, so I do need to see. It doesn't say how long it goes on for, so let's have a look on here and we'll see how long it goes. Okay, so it's, it's, you know, it's only going to be like a few seconds. So it should end. And then there we go. And that's it. That's basically pretty much it for the monk one. So, you know, if you're someone who's just wanting, you know, you're thinking, you know what, 
I want to go around and punch everybody to, to death. You know, anything, you know, it's like, oh, I've had enough of swords and bows and that. I just, I just want to be brutal and just punch every sucker to death. Then, you know, maybe this might be a, a fun one you mess around with because you get a few little bonuses, you get a few little perks to come along with it as well. As well as obviously the ability to go basically pummel everybody. So that's it for the way the monk. Obviously for this one there will be a link in the description below if you want to download this module for yourself if you don't have it or if you just want to try it out and just see what you think of it. So on to mod number two. So we're going to be having a look at two play homes. And mod number two is kind of sort of like if you want a new home but you're working on a bit of a budget. Alright, here we are with mod number two. Which is so aptly named Metaveri's Player House Mod by Metaveri. So, you know, it's, well, it's basically what it says on the tin. It's a player home. So where you'll find it is, you know, you've got Windham here, you've got Agnes Mill here, Marazai Pond here, and then you got Player's Home. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the icon is on the map straight away, but you do have to go and discover it. So you can see where it is, you just can't fast travel there straight away. But once you got it, this is what you're looking for, player's home. So it's on such a budget that they couldn't even give it an address. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's not grand, it's not spectacular, you know, it's not a spectacular sized building. Again. We're on a budget here, but you know it gives you some, you know, it gives you some stuff you need, like a good old chair. To have a sit down in. You know, we all fancy a good old sit down now and then. And if you come over here, obviously you can, you know, you can find some stuff on the table here. And then you got, you know, you got some blacksmithing stuff. You got what you need for blacksmithing. You know, so you got, you know, you got your workbench, you got your forge, you know, you got your grindstone. The only thing that does appear to be missing. It, is a tanning rack but you know again budget you know maybe the current afford one but what's it like on the inside all right and inside it's you know it's what you need you know if you're working on a budget it's what you need at the moment so you know got your own little area where you can have a sit down and have a bit of a read of a book, count out your money. You got your own little kitchen table. You got a place where you can put some ingredients, a place where you can put some of your gems. There's a home key which does I think does play a part into this. Is you know obviously it's not necessary for the door because it's already unlocked. You don't need to find the key to get inside. But you know, you got your barrel, you got you got a pantry, which is named differently because normally it's normally covered, but this time it's called a pantry. So we're going for very old sort of wording there. And then you got your fireplace where you can do a bit of cooking. But if you obviously come downstairs, you know, then you know, you get you know, you get your basic bedroom, you know, the basic kind of stuff you need. Then you got some more stuff for you got more barrels of stuff in. You have another home key. You got your bed, you got your chest, you got a little side cupboard, you got more money to count. You, know, you got a couple of chests, weapons, armor. You got your man you know, got a, a mannequin here. But you also have these display cases and it does say requires key, but I believe this is what the key is for. So And then you go, unlocked with home key. Okay, so why these are actually locked, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know. They have little locks on them, it kind of makes sense huh? that they may be locked. So, you know, so obviously, yeah, at the moment, it's a house on a budget. There's nothing spent, you know, grand. There's no grandeur to it, you know, but it, you know, gives you the bare necessities. But there is also a extra basement. And in the lower basement, as you can see, there's a lot, a lot more space. But it does appear that the lower basement is not follower friendly considering that the rest of the house is. I don't know if that's just a mistake or if it's just by choice. 
you know, you can get a steel sword that's stuck in a dummy. Right for the dummy. And now over by the wall. Because I'm incredibly strong apparently. Uh, but you know, you've got empty soul gems, filled soul gems, so you can sec separate them out if you want, which is actually kind of useful. You know, but you got your Arcane Enchanter, you got your Alchemy Lab, you could pr do a bit of archery practice if you want as well. A little bit of shelving. You got more display cases, which also will need the key or the home key. But lucky enough, there is a second copy down here. I think there's about three or four of these keys in in this house. Place where you can put some bows. You got some bookcases. If you want, so you can put all your books in. You got a place for your ingots, which is full of stuff straight at the beginning. So that's actually quite useful. That's that's pretty nifty. Uh, you got your oars, which is also completely full of stuff. So again, very useful. And they're conveniently right next to another smelter. And if you obviously go in here, there is a secondary blacksmithing area. Uh, but once again, still no budget for a tannin rack. But I got everything else. You know, so you know you got the place where you got some dis you can put some stuff on display, another fancy chair, weapons, armor, grindstone, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so yeah, that's basically it for this one. Yeah, this one yeah, it's not it's not spectacular, it's not grand, it's sort of thing. But if you're looking for something with just that is just simplicity itself. There you go. This one is simplicity itself. You get what you need, you just get a couple of extra things. It's a place where you can go back to, drop stuff off, come back, go go off, go back, go off, no, so on and so forth. The only thing, the only thing I the only thing really I question about is like why there are two smithing areas, but it might just be by the fact that you got and down here you got like obviously your storage for your stuff, so it kind of makes sense for there to be a smithing area down here. But then if that's the case, then why not put some different on the outside rather than the smithing area? But that's that's just me. Maybe Mesaveri had a slightly different idea. So if you're looking for a house that's just basically simplicity itself, you know, it's nothing too complicated about it, nothing too bold about it, you know, it's nice, simple, you get what you need, boom, hey -ho, everyone's happy, then, you know, this might be a good one for you. And once again, this was Mary Very Mesaveri's player house mod, and there will be a link in the description below if you want to download this mod for yourself, even if it is it's just to come in here to get a whole load of free ingots and ores. And a not used house. But then if you're going to come in here and do that, then why not use the house? Even if it's just to, you know, leave one of your followers in here or something. But right, so on to mod number three. Now, what happens if you have, you know, a bit more of a budget? You know, instead of having five thousand pounds you have five hundred thousand pound dude well mod number three we're gonna have a look if you're a rich bastard all right and here we are with mod number three which is mage tower player home also known as tell ashan by the real eleonora Hopefully I got that name right, otherwise I've just butchered it, and I'm sorry. So, to find this mage tower, or Tel Ash Ashtan, you just need to go to Winterhold, just leads just travel up here, boom, there it is. Again, this will be like the Mesaveri's player home, you know, the icon's already on the map, so you can see where it is, but you will need to discover it to be able to fast travel to it. But lucky enough, it's not that far from Winterhold, so it's not really that hard to miss and here we are uh, nice little mage tower that's nicely lit up but obviously this is for if you have a slightly higher budget you know maybe you won the lottery or you know maybe 
a family member died and left you and left you all their money because you're a lucky bastard. So let's have a look in Tal Ashan. All right, and here we are with Tal Ashan. Now, one thing to note is it does mention the description, and it does say that a l apparently a lot of this stuff is just static items. So you know, it's more this there for display rather than functionality. But I think they you know, but you know, there might be a few things that you can obviously grab. So like you know, you can grab the clean blossom, but you can't grab anything else from there. But you know, but obviously the normal stuff, you know, obviously the normal stuff like mannequins, obviously you can still interact with. Uh, you got some, ch you know, you got some of these that you can take as well. Yeah, you know, cabinet, you know, and you got, you know, you got your classic storage. So I think a lot of the storage and stuff like that will work the same. But a lot of the other items are just basic static items, and are just there for display, and that's and that's that, and that's it. So I know first room, you know it's quite small, it's quite cramped, but it does look very pretty, which is all the whole purpose is. You know you want your first room to look nice and pretty. You know it's the first room people see in your house. Uh, search history and law. Obviously that's just obviously probably going to be more for like all your books and stuff like that. You got weapon rack, you got a staff enchanter. Journals and notebooks, so obviously they've been separated out a little bit. You can put your know, enchanted staves in there. You can place away your heart stones. And this that uh, imbuing chamber. And you got a nice little chest in, hidden underneath there. You know. And then obviously over here you got people sneaking. <laughs> and you know, and you got you know obviously an arcane enchanted there. You got alchemical in place there. Uh, I don't know, is that actually a book you can pick up, or is that just... I mean, that's just there for display, I think, that book. And, you know, and, you know, you got all this very nice storage. It's very nicely laid out. And, you know, I like it. It looks good. But, obviously, there is a bit more to this building, obviously. You know, it's not just this. You know, otherwise it would be a bit, like, a little bit underwhelming. Because, as you can see, we've got trap door to basement, or... Portal to the second floor. So the question is, which way do we go? Do I go to the second floor or do I go to the basement? But I think at first we're going to go up in the tower, so we're going to have a look at the second floor. And here we are on the second floor. And you got seem to have something now. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's a hot spring or if it's just a water feature. Yeah. It, it will definitely be a bit cramped if you have as many people following you as I do. You know, it is definitely does become a, a, a just, just a tiny bit cramped. But anyway, as you can see, here we got you got your oven, you got a cooking, you, know, you got you know obviously all your stuff where you're cooking. You got some more storage and all this all that. You got a bed. I think this made. Oh no. Ooh, no, they're actually stairs in here. Ooh, yeah, there's some stairs. Oh, they're on this side. I just jumped over the wall like an idiot. And if you come here, and you know, you can sit in the bath. There you go. So you got a nice little water feature where you can actually take a seat. Let alone, also, it's a place where you can also sleep and also sit next to. You know, so again, it's very, it's small, it's quaint. It looks very pretty, but it also has functionality. So it's a, you know this is a very pretty good house model at the moment. Place with place with all your keys. Look at that. You have Shana Junioris, which does make sense. Uh, you got some just display daggers there. Place where you can plant some stuff if you want. You know, put a few plants in for yourself. And hey, you know. This is all very nice, it's all very categorised and everything like this and everything like that. So again, it's a very nice place. But obviously recommended to probably be here if it's either, you know, if either you're by yourself or maybe just have like one follower rather than having like one, two, three, four, four you know, rather than having like five friends and three dogs. 
you know, then things get just a just a little bit cramped. But that's it for the second floor. So we're gonna have gonna go down and we're gonna have a look at what's inside the basement. And here we are in the basement. So the basement obviously functions as sort of like your smithing area. Where you do all your you know all your smithing needs or you can create all your uh, weapons, armor and you know, all and just all that kind of general stuff. So you know, there you go, you got all this. Oh, there's a mod back to the first mod of the video. So obviously it looks like you can create the the chiefists technically. But you know, but you know, you got all your stuff here. Bada bing bada boom. So obviously over here you got your you got your forge, you got your grindstone, you got your workbench, smithing gear. So you know you got oh it seems like you got a couple of little things bonus to help you get you started with improving your smithing which is actually quite nice and quite useful you got a couple of display cases well not not cases display plaques for things as well you do a bit of wood cutting you know tan wrap now you might be able to hear that you can hear with the dogs but you can't see them you know they haven't followed me down here so obviously this is not being connected up in the same way as the others but obviously it's been designed so technically just up there is technically the first floor in both a logical sense and a literal sense <laughs> right that's it for the basement And I, I can't, ah, I can't get through. All right. So I believe that's it for this one. I, it did say some, I believe it did say some other stuff in the description about uh, other dimensions or something. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I'm sure what exactly what that's all about. But you know, I'm just giving you a general rundown of what this mod is. So if you, yeah, so if you want to check it out yourself, obviously, go to, to the description below. And there you will find a link to Tel Ashan. But we got one more mod, though it's not really directly a mod. It's a shameless plugging, but a shameless plugging where you, the people, can actually win something. And I'm not just talking about, oh, you win a new weapon to go kick some ass with. And it's like, no, you actually get to literally win something that I will make. But so let's go to where you can find it. And I'll give you a little explanation of what it's it all about. All right. So what's this little, what's this thing about winning something? So this is just a little plugin I'm going to add in to something that I very recently uploaded to the professor site for PS4 it's not on Xbox and it's not on PC mainly because with PC there's a way to cheat it and Xbox there may be possible ways to cheat around it whereas PS4 you can't so that's why it's only on PS4 and it basically what this is is it's a story competition so if you've watched a couple of my previous videos, you may be aware that I am currently working on a mod called Dark Moon of Elsewhere. You are going to brew a new and what that is going to obviously do is add in a big large scale mod uh, that's centered around the Khajiit and this, that and the other, you know, if, you know, a very furry kind of mod. <laughs> but I decided to create a little competition where you yourself have the chance to win a way to get a story that you want to have written added into Dark Moon of Elsewhere. Now the story can be anything. It could be it could be it could be a story about anything. You know, it could be a love story, it could be a horror story. It can be a, it could be an erotic story. It could be a comedy story. Though I'm not very funny, but I can always try. <laughs> you know, 
but you know, obviously, you know, but you know, but you know, you get the general gist. You can, you can, let me, you know, you would, you give me a idea for a story, you give me the general synopsis, I write it, and you know, there'll probably be a little bit of back and forth, possibly between me and the winner, on you know, making sure that the stories go in the way that they want, unless they don't want to be too heavily involved in which, if that's the case, that's fine. Now, obviously. Always, always competitions like this. There are terms and conditions, and this, that, and the other. You know. So, how do you find out all this information? All you gotta do. It does say in the description, but I'll also add it here. Is all you gotta do is come to the sleeping giant inn, come into Delphine's room, or the room that you know we tend to find her in. Or basically, the one that leads down to her little room down there. But we're not interested in the room down there. What we're interested to look at is this chest here. So in the chest here, I'm not going to show you know I'm not going to show you the code and clue. You know, if you want to find out what the code is and what the clue is, you need to download this for yourself. Which obviously there will be a link in the description to this competition. I'm not I'm not really even going to call it a mod. <laughs> it's just a comp it's a competition. So I'm not going to show you that, but you know, it's like, so T's and C's, obviously T's and C's are obviously terms and conditions, you know, obviously I had to create some kind of terms and conditions to this thing, otherwise things could possibly get out of hand, and I don't want people to create certain things, you know, so, you know, the rules are simple, find the treasure and it's yours, but there's also a little bonus as you are aware if you decided to read the description of this mod. If you find the treasure and the first one to send a screenshot sass mobile pic, depends on how you decided to get to get the picture, of the notes you find with the hidden treasure, so when you find the hidden treasure there will also be a note in there giving you basically a small instruction, you will have the chance to have a story of your idea added to my next mod, Dark Moon of Elsewhere. Once you have the screenshot, you can either direct message me on Twitter or target me in a Twitter post using at NeonEyes6. In your post message, whatever, also leave me a general summary of what you want your story to be. You know, you don't have to go into great detail, but it could just be just a general synopsis, a general summary. There are also general rules to the content of the story. But your story can be of any genre, so it could be again any genre. It could be a love, you know, it could be a love story, a horror story, a comedy story, an erotic story, a parody story, whatever you want it to be. So here is what I will not be writing or adding into the story. So the, so if someone was a, if so if someone gave me these kind of ideas, no, it's not going to work. And I'll be like, I want to slightly change it. Then if you're going to think about that over, it's going to be slightly so change it or effectively or you will basically lose by forfeit no use of real life racism sexism or any other kind of ism <laughs> you know so racism sexism hiddenism all that kind of fucking stuff unless it's targeted within the law of elder scrolls itself so you know we're not going to bring in real life politics of black versus white and white versus black and you know people against Asians and all that kind of thing we're not bringing any of that shit into it we're leaving that shit out because this is not a place to deal with that kind of shit but what I mean by unless it's targeted within the law of Elder Scrolls itself is like if you say you wanted to do write a book that was written by a lord and it was a book that was slandering the elves that's fine because that's kind of what the Nords do in Skyrim anyway, and in Elder Scrolls as a, and in as a whole, you know. So that's kind of fine. Yes, it does play a part into real life as well because it's a thing that does happen in real life. But we're aiming it at something that is actually a fictional thing rather than that something that is, that is actual factual thing. So you know, it kind of makes sense. No acts of sexual conduct or sexual violence against children. I'm not doing that shit, I'm not fucking running that about that shit, and if you want to suggest that kind of shit to me, 
there's something fucking wrong with you. But that does not mean that the story can have a more violent impact against a child. And obviously what I mean by that is if you wanted to create a story, you know, let's say you, you wanted to create a story and it was about a family, you know, yeah, you, you know, you had the husband, you had a wife and they had a child. And uh, let's say the husband was an asshole, you know, and, you know, he would, you know, he would, you know, he'd be, you know, he'd beat his wife or something or basically it'd be domestic abuse. But then that domestic abuse turned on to the child themselves. Now that thing I'm I'm fine with writing about because I like to explore taboo subjects, but obviously there are limitations to what I will actually write about. So, you know, violence and um, basically say a child being murdered or a child basically just being beaten beaten up, I will write about I will child death in general. I will write about but you know, it's like, but, you know, but it's kind of like try and make sure it stays within the context of the story. So it's you know, it's not just some guy who's going around bur murdering and beating the shit into children just because he doesn't like children, you know. But if it is sort of like you know, it's you know, it's a book about a serial killer who does seem to target children or young adults, you know, teenagers and stuff like that, you know, children to teenage age. And they're the people he seems to target, but you give him a motive as to why he does it. Even if the motive's completely not bullshit, but there is a motive to why he at least he thinks that way and decides to act that way, then that's fine because it's it's a motive. There's an mo in the story. It's not just oh, you're beating the shit into Georgia just because you can. Because it's like that's not good storytelling. That's just rubbish. To be honest. <laughs> You know, you know, we want to make it a good story. And the final rule is no forcing of real life political slash religious views, but Elder Scrolls political slash religious views can be used. So obviously, you know, we're not going to bring in the whole thing to do with Islam and you know, so you know, you know, Islam, the Islamic faith, the Christian faith, Buddhism and stuff like that. All stuff to do with political views in the ways of US and political views and UK political views and stuff like that. No, so, no, keep that stuff from real life, keep that out of this fancy world because we use this world to escape to, not bring in fucking things from the outside world. <laughs> you know. And plus, this is not going to be a platform to push political or religious agendas. I'm not fucking writing about that, so if that's what you want your story to be, fuck off basically you know so you know it's three simple rules they all make sense they it's all fair in ways of the rules but you can still but you can still work a lot on that you know so you know and that's basically generally it for that now obviously again I'm not gonna look at the other one because you if you want to look at look at the other one then download the mod yourself <laughs> and have a go but one thing I will say about the code and clue note is that there is something on there that looks like a free. But the way that they do their writing in this and how it's all presented out, the letter that looks like a free, it's not a number, it is the letter Z or Z. You know, for like C for zebra or zebra. You know. So just want to clear that up, just in case if anyone's like wondering, well, why is there a number in this sequence? It's like, no, that's not a number, it's actually the letter Z, but it's just the way that it's the font is in the notes, which I don't think really, there's a major load I can do about that. It depends on what kind of note I'm writing, I suppose. But that's it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be saying anything else, much else about it. There you go, there's your general rules, that's how it all generally works. It's a small little competition that I've decided to make for a dessert, have a bit of fun and for a chance for people to actually get something of their idea actually in added into the game, especially if they are a person who doesn't do modding. But right, that's it for this video. So once again, for 
there will be links in the description below to all of these mods as well as my shameless plugin and if you want to suggest any mods yourself then let me know in the comments below or you can let me know on Twitter or you can let me know in the barren desert of discord <laughs> and again obviously it will be also the normal stuff or remember to like and subscribe not that it not that, that doesn't really seem to work all that well but you know might as well say it it's, it's kind of normal to say it and you know share this video with some friends you know get the competition out there get these other people's creations out there mainly the other people's creations the competition is just some little silly thing that I've decided to do <laughs> But, you know, but get these other mods out there, get people playing them, um, have a go at them, um, give them feedback on them. But that's it for this video, so until next time, I'll see you all later. Yeah. Obviously very very important, because it's only capital letters, capital letters. So, oh, I'm, I need, I need, I just need to remember one thing I need to put in here. Alright. Wait a minute. It just ain't my sweet rock.